Well, all right, folks, welcome to another episode of West March Workshop. This is episode 142. Have a greedy, greedy season 14, even though it's not Christmas time yet. But a new season is upon us in just a couple of days. Maybe by the time you're hearing this, season 14 will have already kicked off and launched into the stratosphere. We have some interesting news since we last convened. Things that are occurring, new features, sort of, kind of. And of course, some wrap-ups. We have a special guest on the show. Unfortunately, you are hearing my voice, which you should be used to. It's Leviathan here. And you're now seeing on screen that we've got Dread Scythe in the house. What's going on, Dread? You know, everybody. Doing good. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for hopping in the show tonight. And those of you who are wondering where our third compadre is, Mr. Nine, couple of things so one he originally told us that he wasn't going to be able to do today's show because work things were occurring for him and unfortunately it interfered with the podcast schedule but also i wonder too if he would have done the show i don't want to dive too much into his personal life he did tweet about this so if you guys want to head over to his twitter which is at nineball gamer and show some love some condolences he actually just lost a family member yesterday so you know we definitely want to send our love from the west march workshop out to nine i had heard um from him in the past couple of weeks and months that there was some stuff going on with his uncle and unfortunately uh the battle was lost yesterday so you know our our hearts go out to him our well wishes to him and his family and hopefully uh those guys are doing all right and trying to find the the good memories and stuff rather than the heartache of what's occurring at the moment if you want yeah to, yeah if you have any love, well love to the family you know it, it, it's one of those things it's like it's gonna happen we don't get to choose it yeah you know, just, just unfortunately the older you get you just have, like you just deal with it the best you can and hopefully you have people around you to help you through it to deal with it move on but you don't move on away from those people you just move on with the memories of them that's right carry, carry, yep yeah, <laughs> we're gonna say the same the thing reason, carry on the legacy exactly of the, of the people right that, in your uh, heart maybe left too soon or just left in general right keep the love going so yeah starting off on a little bit of a somber note but we can uh we can get the vibe going in a more positive direction of course um, so again, shout outs to Nine. I'm sure he'll be listening, and uh, if you guys do send him any well wishes, I'm sure he'll appreciate them. So, with our usual spiel deal, Dread, it's been a while since we've had you on the show. Usually you premiere your findings from each season and the results and such. Um, so, just in general, how have you been? How's your weeks in gaming been since we last talked to you? Um, it's been good. It's been busy. Um... Real life has been, has gotten expensive. <laughs> um, house projects? Uh, well, h house repairs, mm. house projects. Uh, we had to get a new roof about two months ago. So yeah, that's a fifteen thousand dollar. Fifteen k. Wow. Yeah. Dude, owning a house is crazy. <laughs> I mean, it's still worth it. It's just like annoying. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so like we could have gotten more money when we bought the house because we got the max sellers assist percentage on it um so yeah it's like yeah you deal with it we can deal with it yep. try not to bitch about it too much <laughs> it's staggering the amount of bullshit you're willing to deal with when you when you just inundated with it day in and day out i don't know if it's tolerance or just i just can't handle it right now <laughs> <laughs> um and then we were getting an acid filter for our water because the ph is too low so it's more acidic so we're getting that and that's twenty four hundred dollars and we're replacing the reverse osmosis system that was put in that was a conditional upon the house being done because it was actually in figure system so we're paying for the new one but we didn't pay for the old one so it's just like a lot of money sounds like right granted we're going to be able to pay it all off except the roof mortgage uh, loan you know because that's a lot more money than this uh with the next couple of months so blizzcon is still intact a lot of the chips are still good um but out of real life they're doing great um doing all the articles for the website just have uh 
ironically, the GRC that we're going to go over is going to be the uh, Excel version because I didn't get a chance to do the... Um, it's going to be the raw Excel version because I didn't do the article version of it yet. That's going to be done tomorrow, probably around lunchtime. Have about half of it set up. And then just getting madness ready for the weekend, just enjoying mindless grinding. Oh, yeah. With uh, hopefully Shep and Knight and Line Sword, if he's not going to be late to season start. Uh, the brothers, the four Musketeers will reunite again for <laughs> season start. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, uh, for those who haven't yet visited visited Diablo.BlizzPro.com in recent times, Dread has absolutely been destroying, in a great way, the website with tons of articles, resources. We have the mega post that's going up, and we'll remind you about these things throughout this uh, episode of the show. But yeah, there's tons of great info and videos. I don't know who did those, but you know, lots of great things to utilize up there i wonder who i wonder <laughs> just awesome awesome stuff and it's kind of become our tradition each season to flood the market with tons of things to help players out so diablo.blizzpro.com your one-stop shop for everything you need to prepare for the season and it is coming so you guys are I guess this kind of bleeds into the season 14 stuff so maybe we'll save it for later but i will be curious to hear if you guys have talked about your party composition and all that good stuff um so i guess besides that any other things from your weeks in gaming uh, any e3 things since we talked about it a little bit in the pre-show i will reiterate the one line that will sum up my entire attitude towards e3 in general over the years and i will remember this forever and ever and ever my general feelings on e3 is is e3 where all the content is vaporware and the release date release dates don't matter <laughs> that is my overall sentiment of e3 because it is more true than any one of us actually wants it to be and i'll keep it short <laughs> <laughs> and that's where you leave that yeah i hear you man um i guess transitioning over to my side of things i have been following a little bit of the e3 stuff mainly just the twitter feeds and seeing what people have been hyped about but kind of like you just touched on, you know, it's so funny to see some of these massive amounts of money being spent on these five second trailers or really esoteric announcements of nothing in a way. Not to be like too negative on it all, but I don't know. For me, it's weird, mainly because you guys know I I just play D3. Like, I don't really play much else. So I was telling Dread, usually the way I end up playing new games is I get socially engineered into it. Someone tricks me because they hype it so much. I'm like, I guess I got to pick that up. It sounds too good to not try. Um, but none of these like conferences you or want, trailers. You want to play the new Hearthstone expansion? I'll buy you 50 packs. Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Things like that, man. It's so funny though. Like I feel you are, you're almost better spending the money on your community and getting the community really engaged and advocating for you than these big shows of flashy displays. But I think we had touched on it as far as wrapping it up was they have to spend the money if they believe it's working. Businesses aren't out there trying to just lose money. So I guess they do it because it works. But yeah, I, I kind of want to go to E3 someday, though. Have you ever thought of heading out there? Yeah, no. I mean, E3 is kind of like... I don't know, I would think it's a much bigger version of BlizzCon, so it's like, mm. okay, the demo lines are going to be, like, four times as long, like, what games are going to be coming out that I'm actually going to, like, be willing to wait to play or see somebody, so it's like, ah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess mm, another comment I could make about E3 is that watching E3, watching, like, Sony, you know, and, uh, Microsoft and Nintendo go up there, do their thing, and then you're still waiting around two, three years for the game to come out. I think it's made me appreciate just even in recent times, like the last five years or so with uh, BlizzCon, it's like when they announce something, depending on which IP it is, it's coming out by that time next year or yeah. stuff like Hearthstone or Heroes or Overwatch, like that shit's in beta in like <laughs> three or four weeks from BlizzCon. So it's like they announced it and it's in like 
beta or PTR or you know when they say soon, we all joke about it as like a nostalgia joke. Yeah. Like it means like you're an old timer of Blizzard games. It's like, oh, soon TM. But soon TM doesn't really mean like three, four years. It's really like a year or two. The soon's yeah. gotten better. Yeah. Yeah. It's an updated it's, soon. So it's like soon with, uh, with just parentheses, but no tm anymore or <laughs> or it's soon ish i don't know they need but, to rebrand yeah. it a little bit yeah but i think uh that's kind of one of the other topics that seems to come up is oh we thought maybe we'd see something remember the whole fake or sorry people thought it was real they were like the whole e3 leak document oh man diablo <laughs> 4 or what was it legion wrath con or whatever the hell the name was yeah rapture <laughs> Yeah, and the funny thing was, it's like the Diablo Four Rapture that could be real. I could see almost like an inverted meeting of Rapture, where the Nephilim were actually attacking the heavens and the hells. So it was kind of flipped the meeting. Like, okay, I can actually see that being plausible. Yeah. But right above it on the sheet was World of Warcraft PS4 edition. <laughs> like, it's like, come on. It's like, excuse my language for a podcast, but fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> This doesn't make sense. You know the thing though, I I found it weird that people would even think that that would be the name of the Diablo game because they've never done that though. Usually the expansions get like the extra stuff like Lord of Destruction or Reaper of Souls, but the main title is always just the thing. You know, it's always D3 or D2 or Diablo. It never has like an extra thing. Not to say that they can't break from that tradition, but even that was kind of like, it oh, feels a little off to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, like but, someone who's like trying to go for like a new game yet an expansion, trying to cover all the bases. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this could be anything. Um, but yeah, so I digress. We digress a little bit. Um, funny stuff though. Uh, as far as my weeks in gaming, I haven't done too much since the season ended. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the season thirteen wrap up. So I'll leave that for that. And as far as getting ready now in the non-seasonal time, like I hinted at, I've been putting out a lot of content, videos going on the YouTube channel, and also integrated into the Diablo.BlizzPro.com articles, um, mainly hunting rainbow goblins in my actual gameplay, and also messing around with testing some barbarian with the Raycor set, since that is the Hadrig's gift that's coming for season 14 barbs. And we can also talk about that a little bit in the upcoming news sections. So I've been trying to have some fun with the stream and get everybody on board with some hype. Uh, it's been a lot of fun though. I've been streaming at really weird times for me. I'm off of a technical schedule and I think it's been cool because I've gotten to hang out with different swaths of the community at different times. So definitely having a blast, but really looking forward to getting back on the grind train come this Friday. Get back on the second shift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, into the night shift, into the graveyard shift. <laughs> All that. Old night long. Oh, yes. But before we go forward, we do have to go back. So as mentioned, season 13 wrapped up since we last got together. How'd it go for you? What was your season 13 like? What were your goals? What'd you accomplish? Uh... Well, after season 12, which was on The Wizard, and which is where I got to play so much with you, mm -hmm. you know, you know winking, fluttering the eyelids, <laughs> uh, I was like, oh, I get to play with you, like, all season. Uh, and, and it was wasn't like, hardcore. Yeah, like, I didn't have to worry about, like, dying every five seconds. Um, so that was where, like, I smashed everything from, like, top Paragon in season to gem levels like main gem levels to augment levels to like gear sheet damage personal gr best it was like it was like the super duper season so looking at season 13 going uh, whatever <laughs> <laughs> like I'll, I'll do a dh i'll do shadows i'll, I'll try to make a piece with us uh, star embracers and holy point shots because one or the other will always be my nemesis and they both cooperated this season, so I was happy. Nice. You know, you know, Carly's points were, yeah, we'll leave it at that. They are. Yep. Um, I'm never doing bounties again. <laughs> You're done. Uh, it, it, maybe get guardian, but I, I'm even, I'm even deciding if I want to do that many. And, <laughs> and see, Leviathan knows, but for anyone who doesn't, um, I think I went like butt wild this season. I think I did the equivalent of like. 
like basically I did enough cash bags to fill up your entire full fully unlocked shared stash and probably a little bit more. Like there were there were two times I did one stash tab. There was one time I did three stash tabs. And then there were two times I did five full stash tabs mm -hmm. of just cash bags. Pop them, pop seven open out of one, spend the blood charts, get the mats going, and did not get a primal Carly's, didn't even get a notable travelers or a notable compass through the reforging. It was like, yeah, I'm done. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> that'd, that'd be enough to crush anyone's soul. Yeah, so, <clears throat> but the game was very weird in other ways. This was the, the game was highly accurate in giving me set primals. I didn't, I didn't get any Marauder primals or any Net primals, but I was able to go huh. four of six on my Shadow Suit, as I call it, and I was able to go three of six on my uh, UE suit. Wow. And the crying shame about the UE is that the chest piece didn't roll with discipline and rolled with a screwy uh, ah. like third primary. However, from a previous season, I actually have a perfect UE primal, so I, oh, I, I can swap that. those. So it, it was really strange. In fact, my goal for the last two weeks of the season wasn't get a high GR, wasn't do this. It was actually gambling everything in Helms to try to get a primal Helm, because then my entire center column would have been primal. That was my goal. <laughs> Bingo. It, was like, it was like the most trivial of things. I was like, yeah, I did it within a season. Like, if, if, if get like the like the weird sort of joy that like Big Daddy Dan gets when he reached like hundred primals the yeah. last season. I was like, it's stupid. It means nothing. It, it like all the primals could be crap, but it's like a weird user goal that you set give to yourself. I think. I mean, that's like one of the biggest Diablo experiences, though, right? That's so much of the game for a lot of people. Is what odd, weird thing, goal, obsession can you put in front of you and try to reach in whatever limitation you give yourself, whether it's this coming era of, you know, non-seasonal play, this season, this spring, this summer, whatever. I think that's been so much of what's sustained ARPGs, even back to when D2 was about coming up with the wackiest, you know, pacifist builds or, you know, teleporting barbarian or something like that. Just all these weird goals that people can put together and, I almost wonder, or not wonder, but I almost feel that that's why everyone loves ARPGs as much as they do, even though it's a very niche kind of community. I think it's that freedom to define the game for yourself. At the end of the day, everyone's going to kill a monster, everyone's going to hope it drops something, and pick it up and look at it. But what do you do with it beyond that, right? Yeah, uh, that's how, that's what it was. And it was actually a little bit relieving because I was putting a little, like, I really wanted to get higher up. Like, I did a, a one-on-one clear, and I was like, why is Lightning not carrying me? And then, like I said in the uh, retrospective on the uh, Diablo.BlizzPro website, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I actually had a pretty good cold holy point, and I was actually using uh, the attack speed gem. Pain Enhancer. Yes. I switched over that from being the powerful or stricken, however I was doing it. And it was like all of a sudden I was doing like 103s and I was like wow I actually have a shot at this so <laughs> just switching out those two using cold making sure my placement was as good as it could be I was going up two more it's like okay I guess I have to have some respect for cold now <laughs> it, it, it does actually help bring you up more so like okay fine I'll submit and I got within 30 seconds on a couple of tries I could have done if I just cared enough yeah but... the fishing I was like, oh god. Look, okay, okay. After SVR's rant about fishing and everything, all the memes, I wasn't fishing. I just didn't want it enough. <laughs> <laughs> what, if we're being brutally, on, if I'm being brutally honest with the camera right now, I just didn't want it enough because I could have had it. I just didn't want to burn myself out on it. So that's what it was. There you go. <laughs> nice man. Well, it sounds like it was a successful one overall for you. I guess we could take a... Oh, sorry, anything else? No, I was going to say, uh, how was yours? My season 13 was interesting because it was the first SSF league and I wanted to make sure as an ambassador, administer, 
administrator uh, of the league that I was participating as much as I could, making sure to really be kind of the face of it if I could, or at least give people a point to come to, to see it in action. So I tried to do as much as I could with it. I started with softcore for my season, as I've been talking about throughout the last few episodes of the podcast. And then I took a little bit of a break in between, and then I came back for hardcore, but all of it was always SSF. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was definitely a different way to play. You felt the challenges of being 100% solo. You know, you had those bounty adventures. Bounties are, I mean, you can still do them as a solo player, but it's even more arduous and with, you know, still that potential no luck from the results of all those reforges. So to some degree, it's kind of the least efficient thing you can do unless you strike it rich or you get lucky and get some really boss reforges. So it's kind of funny that it really boils the game down to be very, very efficient so you can get your Paragon and just do these few things over and over. Rifts, greater rifts, rifts, greater rifts, look for your pools rinse and repeat, and then, you know, push greater rifts. And the thing that is kind of funny that I think a lot of people end up realizing is when you're in groups, of course you go higher than a solo player often does. So then when you go to do your solo pushes, all these greater rifts are unlocked. You know, if you've only done a 100 as solo, then you go do a greater rift 120 in group, then you have everything between 100 to 120 to go for if you try to do solo. But as a solo self-found player, if you think you're capable of a 110, well, you got to go and do the one, the 100. Maybe you do it fast enough to unlock up to 102, and you got to do the 102. So, like, it slows everything down. I think it kind of helps you appreciate just the way that the game comes together and maybe the way it used to be a little bit. Gear still comes at you quickly enough, but perfecting that gear takes a little longer, especially, again, without the bounty mats. Uh, and the Paragon is going to be lower. The gem level is going to be lower. The augments are going to be lower. So it's all just, like... You're scrapping for every inch, and I personally enjoy that as a grinder. I really do. I'm really glad that that experience can kind of live on in the league, and we will be running it back again for Season 14, which I guess we can talk about a little bit in the preview for Season 14. But that's pretty much my season, and we'll do some SSF review as well for the results of the league. We can get into it a little bit more. But for me personally, mm -hmm. I didn't do a ton of uh, high rankings as of, like what I wanted to get out of the season, but I still enjoyed the time that I had with it. I think for my hardcore side, I ended up rank 20 on the official leaderboards and rank 2 in the league for Demon Hunter behind Necronomicon. So that's that. And I feel like right now, we've done our personal views, and we should take a wider look at the Season 13 as a whole with your... Handy dandy spreadsheet, spreadsheet, spreadsheet. You ready? Yeah. All right, let's dive in. All right, so I'm going to be, I get to see everything in Wonders Delay O Vision on uh, through the Twitch. So I'll tell you where to go. Yep. And then we'll go from there. So we'll just start perfectly where you are uh, on the soft core and the hard car the main uh, main seasonal charts and then there's actually two two new sheets underneath um so basically going into this season everyone knew um the pat there's gonna be no new patch no new buffs no new nerfs so basically the thing was all right they did tweaks to the necromancer and it's still very much played so even though it went down last season on the hardcore side was and uh especially a little bit on the softcore side would it kind of rebound so that was one view the second view is would the gap uh the average gr clear gap would that um narrow compared to last season would it expand would it say about the same which means that despite all the different variables and i there's probably about a dozen of them if not two that could affect everything on this from within a season and it, from season to season despite all that would it stay the same or would it increase or decrease and then the last thing is did any classes actually improve so the funny thing is in season 13 softcore and i think hardcore by the numbers Crusader was the only class that had improved a little bit in their average GR clear, but every other class went down by anywhere between the GR to as much as maybe two or three. Hmm. Um, 
but the overall average GR Rift clear. Again, this is averaging the top 1,000 softcore side for a class and the top 1,000 for uh, hardcore for the same class, averaging them out. They get rid of the top outliners and the bottom outliners, making it a little bit more standard number. Uh, the numbers pretty much kind of stay the same. So the balancing and the effort that developers put into for season, what was it? 12. 12 is really panning out. Like if uh, if like a barber is able to clear a 102 season 12, you can expect to get up to around a, a 102 average wise, again, by the sheet. The top end may be somewhere around like, you know, 112 or whatever it is. Um, but the relative power of the class has stayed the same and staying consistent. So that's good. Uh, the sheets on the bottom of the page you're on right now, uh, Levi, these actually measure the differences of the highest GR average minus the lowest GR average, and you get that difference. So say, to make this, give you a simple example, say Wizard in Season, well, whatever, Season 5 did a 100, that's the highest. The lowest was a Barb who did 90. The difference is 10. So the chart you see, the higher the number is, the bigger the gap is, which means there's a bigger discrepancy between the classes. So that we want in future seasons, or potentially in a future game, uh, wink, wink, nod, nod, <laughs> all, all those British com comedic terms, um, we want these. We actually want these two charts to get as low as they possibly can within reason. So as that you would, see, that would denote parity between the classes. Yeah, and then. I mean, last in season 12, I mean, there was a sharp drop off and softcore a little bit less uh, for hardcore, but they pretty much stabilized. So, pretty much where the classes are is where they are. And the main reason for that is because hardcore side, the necromancer and the witch doctor, and softcore side, mainly the witch doctor, have dropped. And they're consistently the lowest. Hmm. And it's because we all know the Necromancer is great in groups, but it is super fragile. And hardcore being you die once, you die forever, you, we can see why that is in hardcore. And Witch Doctor was actually pretty good about middle of the pack, as you can see you, when you look through the graph and you see the green line going through all the others. But ever since the Necro came in, the Witch Doctor lost his place in the four player meta. So it dropped because it probably couldn't get the higher Paragon levels, the higher, and then consequently the higher Augment levels, so it suffered on its solo. So that's the power of groups. So this whole the solo self bound league, that actually eliminates this, hmm. what you're seeing here. This is a visualization of the four-player meta. Uh, if you're not in the cool, cool kids club, this is what you expect to happen. I'm actually really intrigued uh, because I think you can look at and maybe draw out of this the fact that in season 12, that was when I think you could say maybe halfway through, it's, it's hard to exactly pinpoint when it occurred, but there was that transition from the Witch Doctor being the main AoE clear in the four-man groups to the Wizard with the Star Pact Meteor setup being the main AoE clearer. Uh, and so... You didn't really see it affect, maybe, the Witch Doctor results, but I almost wonder if you can attribute, like you said, with the Witch Doctor really getting its spot taken away in Season 13, maybe that's why that dip is so pronounced as compared to some mm -hmm. of the other classes that didn't move that much. Yeah, and as much as we may, we were maybe, well, I'll say at least for my part, maybe a little bit naive that there could be two okay let's not put a number several equal metas mm -hmm. for groups so say the traditional meta and then maybe something wacky where a necro came in and you had a wizard and they were both equal as a matter of what what how rng treated you but unfortunately like no it really did get distilled to the top four and that's it so i think and the funny thing is it's like the Demon Hunter, ever since, what, for Hardcore Side, Season 8, 
has been rocketed. I mean, <laughs> the only reason why the, the Necromancer got in is because there's new hotness, and that they probably the Necromancer probably got in only because there's probably a, a groundswell of people that were playing the Necromancer. So it had more people, more people, the potential to do higher clear. So the GR average number was going to be, I want to say, manipulated, but inflated. Because there's a lot of, when I, every season I do this thing, I see more potential ways that things could be inflated. But all in all, like Demon Hunter, I think it's going to rule hardcore for a while. And I, and as long as there's no changes, Crusader has established a trend. It's probably going to be the new king of softcore. Yeah. Taking look from the wizard for so, so long. Back from season 6, again, to season 10. And Necromancer only beating it out because, again, new hotness, groundswell of people, higher ranks naturally, and the number got bigger. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's actually really fascinating to see those differences. And having now played both sides, uh, Softcore Crusader and Hardcore Demon Hunter, it actually makes perfect sense. When you think about the power of N6, M4 and the safety in the setup, with the especially the cold version and how much healing you can get out of it, then I feel like Hardcore Demon Hunters feel very safe to push that setup. And of course, you still have the outliers. Well, it's hard to call them outliers because Demon Hunters have so much parity when it comes to their greater rifts or the high grade rift pushing setups, but you know, some of the other options of you will see some hardcore players like Tuba was mentioning to me in Asia, some of the top clears last season were multi shot demon hunters. But if you look at Americas, a lot of the top was all N6 M4. You had a little bit of shadows in there and not much multi shot representation at all. Then you go to Softcore for the really high clears and Crusaders there because sure you might die in some instances when you're clearing those uh, high level greater rifts. But the fact of the matter is that you're able to go so, I wouldn't even call it glass cannony, but just so, you can get so much damage out of that setup and just kind of play it on the edge. If you've ever watched a uh, really skilled softcore crusader, you know, they're taking strategical procs of the Akarat's champion prophet, you know, resetting their health and all this stuff. And like, it's it's almost art in motion. So it's kind of crazy, but it, it does bear itself out in the numbers when you just think of, kind of what you're seeing when players are pushing what they're pushing. So yeah. I, I wonder yeah. though, uh, just real quick, and this is kind of a question to you, you did mention it, and if the patch stays the same, what do you think would change anything? Like, I almost wonder if the only thing that would affect averages going forward or numbers is popularity of classes. If for some reason the Witch Doctor just continues to be very unpopular. Because I, I almost wonder too, since the Crusader is kind of heralded as this the strongest class in the game or the strongest build in the game that's a reason for it to stay popular despite being out of the four player meta and i think demon hunters have just always had a, a soft spot in people's heart even though they're not in the four player meta so they're a popular class then you have the other four classes represented so is it just because it, you know will the witch doctor numbers continue to dip just because they don't have a home and no one really likes them solo i don't know i mean to answer to answer the question uh, you have to start out kind of like bird's eye view, like, you know, 30,000 foot view. Um, the criteria being s season, there's going to be no season patch. So basically say the next, next four seasons are going to be exactly how we, how we have them now. Mm -hmm. So the patch just stays the same. So what, so what you, the first thing you have to look at is which classes or maybe not popular, but which classes have the best builds and how easy are those builds to actually flush out? Like mm -hmm. how long do they take? And what are and and more I think more or importantly, like that's almost like the part B. The part A is which classes and which builds are the best speed builds. Because when you view it that way, your monks and your demon hunters yeah. are probably going to be where they are, more or less, just being by just sheer them being the farmers. Like, if you, you can easily get a demon hunter or a monk up to farm in GR 90s pretty easily. And then you're using those to farm blood charge for your crusader. So the crusader or the crusader, the necromancer, or the wizard may take longer because 
their affix requirements for certain setups are, are that much more specific, especially Kandan. Any, like, 50-plus cooldown reduction uh, build or a rat for mm-hmm. uh, rat necro for rat runs is awfully affix specific. So those builds are going to take longer. So any of those builds that take longer to flush out are going to naturally suffer because how many times can someone do that and then be successful and then continue upgrading those builds. So when I view it through that lens, I could see the Crusader, the Necromancer, and the Wizard actually going down a little bit. Um, And in some, uh, I could see Barbarian and Witch Doctor kind of staying the same because Barbarians are just needed no matter what in any meta setup. Like, like standard, uh, or um, speed. speed, or just soloing, and then when you get uh, to the speed setups again, monk or demon hunter, they'll be in their nineties, and then as long as there's people who are willing to play them, you'll they'll still be mid to top. Is just going to be you almost can't look at classes as what class to play. It's almost like. Um, which tool or which tools do I feel like using to, to get my very best for this use? Sure, sure. That makes that makes sense to me. While you were speaking, too, another factor I thought of, or two factors, could be theme seasons, if there are some interesting themes that change stuff around. So we can talk about that in a moment. A little mm-hmm. spoiler for the yeah, future. De- yeah, definitely. And then maybe the Hadrix gifts, too, because that tends to shift popularity. Everyone's always asking, what's which class has the fastest start? Which class has the best Hadrix gift set to start with? So that might also, even though it it eventually gets to what I think you're talking about, which is sort of using the tools the way you want to, it could shift what classes some people just stay with if they only make one per season or whatever, if a certain Hadrix gift is good or not so good for a class. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, a perfect example for this season is DH to start with Marauders, which is a great start, but it's more of like, you're tanky, you're doing damage, but you're tanky. So it's not the most expeditable uh, gear setup, and same thing with Wizard with DMO. It's not the most expedited uh, speed farm build. So, mm-hmm. again, we'll see you next season. No, what was it? September 16th? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, well, any uh, closing words on this thing? Really great job with it, as always, and people can look forward to seeing it on the website. Yep, Uh, hopefully tomorrow, mid-afternoon, nothing really else. I think we got the main points. There were too many to go over, and there's, I think there's, if I did my math right, there's officially 162,000 data points in this fucker. (laughs) It grows. It continues. 14,000 every season. My goodness gracious. Well, thank you uh, for that. As always, really fascinating view from the top down looking at the seasonal stuff. And we'll continue to keep those rolling in. So make sure you guys do your work for season 14 so you can affect all the averages and stuff. And we'll see what the new numbers come back as. Uh, manipulate, very... the, manipulate the meta, break the game. <laughs> exactly. And then very quickly, since uh, we spent some good time on that, I do want to flip over, since we teased it, to talking about the solo self-found results. I did do a video on this, and now my my spreadsheet is going to look so crappy compared to Dreads, but whatever. So uh, we have our results that we keep all throughout the season long updating as people put submissions in for the league. There's a very you know strict set of rules and structures and such that go with it. So if any of you are curious about the SSF league, you can uh, check out my Discord, discord.gg slash leviathan. There's a whole channel for it, and all the pertinent links are in there and stuff. That's probably the easiest way to find it right now. But there's also an article that Dread did, like you mentioned, this morning, Wednesday morning, added to the website at diablo.blizzpro.com, where you can find information on the league as well if you want to participate, if you're interested in 100% solo stuff. But just very briefly here, we can see SVR, our buddy, our man in the field, claim the top spot in solo cell phone league for season 13 with a 118 on the crusader this does and i would actually be interested in you taking some of the data points from this and maybe running a mini version of what you do just so you could see how it compares to 
the overall population versus just the SSF population. But from what I was able to ascertain, Crusader was very popular. A lot of people either used a Crusader to get their Paragon or just played Crusader in general to level gems and go to really high greater rifts. So you can see all this yellow that's on display represents the Crusader. Top three marks, some monks got in there as well too. And I think that goes back to what Dread was talking about with them being very great speed farmers with Sun Wuko Wave of Light, but also being able to push pretty decent ranks as well for greater rifts. And these two players, Lobo and Demonic, like really hardcore players with a lowercase h because these are softcore marks but they just very much know their stuff and so they're able to take the monk up there and break up this crusader block uh for the top hardcore spots oogie boogie took this with his hardcore crusader relatively early in the season too we actually do track the dates that people got these clears and his was from uh april 7th so that was you know relatively in the middle of the season or so before he retired um, pretty incredible stuff. And then we also had Hulk Maid coming in second place for the hardcore side. And then Jert Me, all Crusaders. And our top three for softcore was SVR, Talaron, both Crusaders, and then Lobo with the Monk. And this spreadsheet goes further into detail in terms of being able to sort it by the different classes. Um, and we have like the video clears for people that submitted them and things like that so there's there's a lot of info that we're trying to call together to promote just this 100 percent solo play atmosphere again this is going to come back for season 14 and we're hoping to make it more robust in the future with things that we might add to make the league a little different from what's in game since we have the wherewithal to do it it's been a lot of fun running it and just seeing the passion people have had for it and ideas that have come along so pretty cool i uh I hope to see maybe Dread someday. Maybe you'll poke your head over there. That's what's up, huh? Uh, probably not, but I will say this. In the <laughs> beginning, you kind of, whether you knew it or not, and you didn't, trust me, you didn't, you served up what's going to happen next perfectly. Hmm. All right, say no more. I think I know what you're getting at, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Check in the Discord. Okay. Oh, look. <laughs> I, I made you two gifts. You have to show them on screen, though. Oh, really? All right. I'll have to see if I can finagle that. I, you can't spring up surprises on me because it, it messes up. Oh, no, no, no. This is total surprise. Because this is a gift to you because I'll talk as you get this set up. I don't read ahead, damn it. Um, Which basic, Discord is it in? Uh, the Solo Cell Fountain League okay. of your Discord. Um, I because in the beginning I saw the Excel sheet. I, you you were learning how to. I won't say you were learning how to do Excel. You knew how to do Excel, but you're trying to figure out how to do this out. And who knew how popular this was going to be? Were ten people going to do it? Were hundred people going to do it? Were thousand people going to do it? Who, who knew how many were going to do? And it was great when like I think like within the first week, I saw like oh wow this is like actual real leaderboard with filtered views like oh shit they nailed it down and svr made the helper uh, and you had the two channels at the helper so people could ping that way more than the bot would probably allow it to be done and i was like this is pretty good so i originally was going to do an article with these views but literally life has been too busy too many other more important articles to do um so i barely got these done right before we went live like when I said like two minutes, I really needed more like three. And then I saw <laughs> I made a spelling mistake in the the title. Crap. <laughs> so uh, if you want, if you have them loaded up. Yeah, I have it now. Screen. All right, so this is. I... Go ahead. No, oh, get it, get it on screen, and then I have the image loaded up here, and I'll read out the quote. Okay, go for it. I'm gonna wait till I see it. This is a podcast. Keep talking. <laughs> they already see it. <laughs> All right, fine. So, again, I made a massive softcore only and a massive hardcore only. And the, the top quote reads as is, To the brave few, the few that took the solemn path, the path of self-worth, <laughs> to, oh discover one, to discover <laughs> one's true potential 
we honor your sacrifice, we celebrate your glory. And it basically has all the softcore ranks and all, and then the other image has all the hardcore ranks from one to the end. And then for you, Levi, at the end, you know, since I've done all your work and, you know, spoilers, I put your little brand at the bottom and I added a quote for you, simply stating, thank you for going on this journey. Hope to see you turn, travel down this path again. Ah, this is awesome, dude. Very nicely done. So this is, well, this is a gift for this season and I made it luckily in a way I could repeat it for seasons past. So these will be little things that people can look at, see what they are, maybe give them encouragement to do it again, get higher, and go from there. Sweet. Well, uh, I'll have to add that to the overall spreadsheet so people can get that in their results for a little more fancier looking view. That's really cool, man. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. And this is what happens with production when Dread decides to spring things on me. And it's not even usually my turn to do the production. So just in case anyone's like, what was going on here? That was that was not planned. But thank sorry, you. Not sorry. Yeah, yeah, he's not sorry. That was really cool though. Really awesome. And we got to hurt we got to hear Dread read at a third grade level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, I'm just messing with you. No, no, honestly, because, like, the reason why I did this is because I came up with the quote literally within, like, 10 seconds because that's how my brain works. Like, I'll have, it'll be, like, vomit. It'll be like, oh, no, 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 I think, you know, give me that idea. Give me, no, give it, give, give back. I, I need to make sense of it. And then it was out of my system, and then I didn't have to remember it anymore. And then I had to try reading it. I'm like, wait, what did I write? What did I say? <laughs> Perfect. And we have one question in chat from P. Me. Do you think that Blizzard will add a SSF League or season into the game if you guys can pick this up more and more? Uh, for Diablo 3, I personally don't think so, because I feel the feature development for the game is probably done. I, I, I almost feel, and it's kind of a little bit of a spoiler, we can go into it actually now, when we talk about theme seasons and exactly what they are and what they could be. I do wonder if we'll see any comprehensive themes, because that could denote that they're willing to do a little bit more for D3. But if we see the themes for D3 seasons be, like, relatively simple stuff like these you know buffs or little things that we've seen in the past then i feel like you can kind of from there infer no major changes are going to come to the game which i think ssf would represent a major change like they've been so reluctant to add additional leaderboards even with when you look at the challenge rifts those boards are here and gone like the, the only things you can see and we're on the 51st challenge rift is the one that is currently happening and the one that just happened last week and those other results, those other 49, are gone. So, I don't know. I think maybe this is going to help push them to add something like it in the next game, whatever it might be, if it would afford a way to work in the next game. But as for D3, probably not. But that's just me being realistic. Optimistically, I would love if they add it. I don't know, though. Yeah, I mean, I can't add anything more. It's just a premise of... This is where we think the game is in development, and that usually dictates much simpler changes, additions, than mm -hmm. that would be. But does it mean we can't still try and do? And if anything, make them aware that this is something that we like. It's something that it is prevalent in other like-minded genre games. Mm -hmm. And just, if anything, it keeps, the, it keeps it in their mind. Not so much back burner more front burner for the next game when, whenever that happens <laughs> well said my friend and all right i think that's the perfect transition into the season 14 preview we're done season 13 is officially in the dirt bury it six feet under let's talk season 14 now because we did get a little preview blog after our last show and we now know what the hadrigs gifts are officially the conquests the cosmetics, which I have an image of to showcase. I suppose for those who are only listening to audio only, this is probably a good episode for you to check out the VOD on Twitch or YouTube when it goes up, because we did a lot of visual stuff today. Um, so mm -hmm. if that's something you're interested in, you definitely want to check all that out. But yeah, let's talk theme season. So that was one of the things that was previewed in the post. And can you tell us what theme seasons are, Drew? Sure. Uh, basically, theme seasons are... Uh, it's a new experiment, 
as uh, they put it in the blog post, mm-hmm. and it's pretty much they want to start seeing uh, how they could tweak the season, how they've always said they wanted to, but starting with next season with like little elements, like how can we change it up? Whether it's a game mechanic, uh, something on the world, or something uh, with your character in a way something works. Mm-hmm. So that's the journal idea of themes and transitioning transition in, in, into season 14 with it being the first one is going to be the season of greed and what that entails is uh whenever there's a goblin spawn in the natural world or in a nephilim rift uh there will be a second one of the same type so you're running around in a rift you see a blood goblin there'll be another blood goblin you're running around in the world, you see a gelatinous, you'll see a second gelatinous. Mm-hmm. Good luck on that server leg. <laughs> um, so basically, that's what the season is going to be. Um, uh, other nuancy rules, like one Rainbow Goblins, if there will be two of them, but they'll spawn one portal, so that will still work. There won't be duplicate goblins in the vault. And other rules. Now, if this sounds familiar to anyone out there listening, yes, this is essentially taking the bonus goblin weekend events that we've had in the past. Uh, we had, I think, the last one was uh, during BlizzCon last year, and to tell you the truth, I can't remember when the last one was before then because they kind of had a stance that they didn't want to do those kind of things during the season. Right. Um, it's kind of taking that and the core rules that that established that I just reiterated, and makes it the entire season which i guess we can kind of move into how we feel about it and i mean i'm okay with it uh it's not the most ground shattering thing it does it 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 makes it so especially early on i know some other people have actually kind of expressed negative feelings towards it how it and i've said this and describing it it's a gear accelerate in the beginning of a season because any treasure goblin you're getting twice as many death breaths you get more of those early mats or if you get a uh, a blood shard goblin you're getting more blood charge which means you can uh, basically pull that uh, slot machine with Kadala much more often so if anything not only is it a gear accelerator it's a conquest accelerator hmm. because the conquests we have for this season are really easy yep like if like Anyone can go four or five this season extremely, uh, ex- with almost no effort. The last one uh, being, you know, six sets, uh, what is it, GR level 55? 55, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, if all you did was just roll up two characters and do gear shouting, you could easily get that one too. So it's going to be very interesting this season. Early season leveling. If pe- with people getting lucky and see how quickly you hear those lovely ping <laughs> <laughs> when someone uh, completes a conquest and is the first one to do it. That's what's going to be interesting about this season. So it's going to be a lot of front-loaded stuff. It will still be good for the background, but as far as feelings towards this being the first one, from my point of view, and I'm, I, I, I'll stick away from being brutally honest and just being <laughs> honest, it's great that they're doing this. I think everyone in the, from the streaming community to the fan site community to the overall Diablo 3 community loves this that we're finally getting it. For this one being the first one, it's kind of meh. Yeah. But, but we have to be the responsible player community to say, all right, fine. It's the first one. It's something that I pre programmed. We're getting it. Let's see. Let's keep a good head about ourselves and let's shoot as many ideas off and try to get something more more the the game forcing you to think a different way about doing something uh for the next one and the one after that and really get the really get life back in the seasons yes so i feel like we cheated a little bit because we've discussed this kind of in depth previous to the show uh in our slack for blizz pro and you and I definitely expressed pretty darn similar sentiments towards it all. Um, I'd echo you on pretty much everything you've said, so I don't want to repeat too much of what you said. 
the double goblin theme, I think you brought up some great points in that it will definitely make that competition for the people trying to be the rank ones for conquest and stuff maybe a little luckier, a little more RNG based. Um, even though I think the people that have the strats will will likely be the ones still at the top and they'll just, like you said, be able to do it a little faster if the goblins are there. If they're not, you know, they're still going to probably find a way to execute their strats anyways. Um, so I think that, yes, this is a good opener of the thing, the theme thing being a thing. As far as the most enticing theme that they could have picked, I don't feel that this is that. Even if they were to go solely off of the buffs that we've seen previously, because in the past we've had... I don't remember if it was double legendary, but it was like an, it was like more legendaries than usual, and that was for one of the anniversaries of the game. I remember back then, legendaries were still pretty scarce, and I, I have this image somewhere in my phone, but I was keeping track of all the legendaries I got from playing a ton. Like from, I think it was a week-long buff. And it was crazy. I was like, oh my god, guys, I got like 35 legendaries, which was like an insane at that time. And now you're like, ha, that's one rift for me or something, you know? I don't remember that at all. Your memory's uh, better than mine. <laughs> oh, man. I only probably remember it because I have the, uh, the image. But that was, I think, one of the very first ones that they implemented. Then, like you mentioned, we've had some other ones with double uh, blood shards, double bounty mats, which was the most popular one by far uh and then the double goblin one is kind of the one that they've brought back in recent times before usually the week before each season it's been for the last two or three i think so you know it's probably the safest one it's one that they can turn on one that they're familiar with i think uh, as far as them trying to get it enabled and working for this uh, who knows if it was like a late comer idea as they try to find a way to make season 14 differ a little from seasons 13 and 12 since again this is the third season on the same patch but yeah i want to definitely give a call to action to our community here all you guys that are west march workshoppers you know one of the things we used to do back in the day is always come up with these crazy ideas of how we want the game to change or what we would see in certain features and such so let's do it for this one for theme seasons Shoot us your wildest ideas, maybe ones that you think would actually be plausible. I've been seeing a lot of ideas in the community, like Dread said. I think if we try to come up with ones we want to see that are maybe implementable without a lot of dev work or such, it could be that they look at that idea and say, hey, that works, let's do that one. So throw your ideas at us, westmarchworkshop at blizzpro.com. Send an email over, we'll read it on stream, see if uh, the community will get behind it. We'll do a little campaign, who knows, maybe vote for the best one or have a prize or something. But if I could pick your brain, Dread, if there's one theme in particular that you'd like to see, crazy or not, what would you do? Uh, I feel like I have an idea, but I feel unprepared because like my mind my mind is in a developer space wholly and completely i mean thinking about paragon which no we're not gonna get it oh god no don't worry um but the the approach from like all the dev hells and all the and the rules that state in the beginning of of each dev hell article you know don't try to change the game you know hold the game systems uh holy as far as not altering them you know etc cetera, etc cetera. like really putting restrictions on myself so that's why i do the best with what we have versus disregarding the game and kind of shoveling out of the way like eh, we don't need that we'll just sure. do this um i know svr had an idea and mine's kind of like similar idea it's a little it's a little less it's a little bit more murky but it would kind of it, it would change the game in the same way but different it would be it would be skill based it wouldn't be you know arbitrary game doing something for you svr's idea was uh you know at like 50 percent you would have you would have a boss spot in a gr it would be 50 percent of its regular health pool regularly it would be a full health but at 50 percent, you would have to do one gr so you'd have to have that shifty mechanic going by you know being alert you know because now you have conduit mechanics you have where are your lead packs your trash mobs where are you in the map and are you too close to the next map or for conduits it would be a, a lot more mechanically uh skilled to, to do it and then again at 100 percent you would have the a second boss potentially different one 
So you could have like a Binder and Perendi, or you know, you can get two Hamlets. Who knows? RNG is a wondrous bitch sometimes. Um, so my thought, you know, I, I like that because it was mechanically different. It made you hone your skills better, but it wasn't just something arbitrary. So I was like, no, just doubling something. Um, J. Oh, Wilson. <laughs> so <laughs> my is. idea was, what if at what if at the beginning of a level, the end of a level, and somewhere in the middle, which I don't want to say is easy enough to do, but maybe easy enough to do. Who knows? Um, they would have to they would have to figure out a way to not make this special pylon not interfere with regular pylon spawns. So that's that's where this idea is a little less built, a little, a little less cohesive. I was thinking, well, if we're, if we're going to make an alternate version idea, why don't we just say boss first? There's a special pylon that if you go in, you're like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle this. So you just go in, you trigger the GR boss right away. And then after the boss, it is a race to kill the rest of the trash to get that GR bar filled. <laughs> and you can do it before the timer runs out, you clear it. It's... It, it, it's it's a similar enough idea, but it's a different way to approach it. And I think that's the way we as a community should be approaching this. Think of taking systems, flipping them on their head, and then going from there. Because another idea is everyone hates sets. Well, I won't say everyone hates sets, but we all know the, the, the pigeon holding that sets do. So instead of having a season where there's no sets, why don't we just have a a season season of the legacy of nightmares where the only set we have is legacy of nightmares mm -hmm. so it still pushes you to get primals and agents but you can build whatever set you want now granted some classes already have their predefined versions of it and they would most likely be doing that and that's something that would be for jail but some other classes don't so it may encourage more theory crafting more using your brain versus using the internet so I guess those are two twists on two ideas that are already out there. Yeah, those definitely sound interesting. And I think they're on the right track of like stuff that could change within the game without adding assets or art or anything, you know, like there, it would be some shifting of the way things tend to work, but they definitely do ask something of the player to think about how they're going to go through their season now that this different challenge is in front of them. And I guess if I were to answer the question myself too, mine is along similar lines where I would like to see a season theme where the Hadrig's gift determines the set for that class for the season. So if the next season had UE set for Demon Hunters for Hadrig, then that's the only class set you can get. And other things would drop like Focus and Restraint and the Isvin's Paired Blades and stuff. But the only class set you could get as a Demon Hunter would be the UE set. And so what this does, and similar to your lawn-only idea, you're going to break up tons of metas. You're breaking up the four-player meta, because now what if the monk set is only Uliana's? There's no Inna's now. Do you have a support monk? Like, do you find a new way to play support? New items? Like, it might change a lot of what the group looks like, how high they go, what augments people are now able to get. Um, and then on the solo leaderboards themselves, it would be crazy because... You know the old joke of, oh yeah, when you look at Crusader, it's just 1,000 Condemned Clears. Well, if you looked at Crusader and the rolling set was what they got for Hadrix, it's 1,000 rolling clears, which you've never seen on your leaderboards before. So it'd be kind of cool to see if it's a set that's not in the current meta as far as the patch goes, but it's the only available option then what are players going to do when that is what what's in front of them, you know? Does that mean no one plays Crusader that season, right? That's also a potential option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. But I, I actually had, I when I was thinking about sets, I was, I was thinking somewhere around that. You articulated it better than I would have. Um, but yeah, that's like interesting because, um, man, SVR are getting all the plugs tonight. <laughs> um, because his idea was, you know, if you're going to go re the restriction route, do something restricting that forces a new play style. Uh, I would only hesitate against that because if you restrict too much of the game, then it, it's like, here, go back to yellow rares, which I 
you know, is a plausible thing. Hey, you only have rares. <laughs> yeah. Go have it. Um, that would be probably more of like a mini season, like a month or like a two week type deal if they were ever to go that way. Which, hey, that's actually a reasonable request. If they're going to do themes and people are willing to go through like a rare only season or a legendary only season, maybe a, a suggestion by itself is like, hey, if you're going to do it. Why don't you? Why don't you give us like these special micro uh, seasons that are a month long so we can do the more improbable things, but we're not waiting three months for the next one. That right. in itself is a suggestion. Sure. So, sure. But no, the, get, coming back around to uh, your idea with the whole set and that's the only drops, I actually like that too because it gets rid of the item pool pollution. So you know yeah. if the item is going to drop, you're not going to worry about stupid black thorns. That's not used. Well, no, technically, I, yes, black thorns because it's not a class set, so it would still drop. Son of a bitch. <laughs> you're not getting away from black thorns. <laughs> The primal black thorns chest will haunt me forever. Yes. Um, but, but, okay, okay. No, your points don't go for it. You're still on but, the right but, track. But it's like, you know, when it's a class set item, you know, okay, this is another chance at an upgrade. So it actually builds in excitement. Mm -hmm. and if you can if you can get like, okay, wizard is DMO, but... You could uh, come away from that season with the best DMO set you would ever possibly oh, get. Because yeah. there's so it's many like, chances at like primal, you know, DMO chess, uh -huh. he helm, gloves, etc. It's like, uh, it's like, which is DMO? Eh, not so much. DH is shadows, which it's not, but we could always dream. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going there. I'm right. doing that thing. That's the thing this season. So that would be, and that gets you excited because like every piece is another chance at an upgrade. This item pool pollution BS yeah. uh, won't won't kill me too much. And even to quickly hop back to your lawn idea, I think what this would what would it would do without doing it is essentially create what some players have been asking for for a while, which is specific leaderboards for specific things, right? Like I want a leaderboard that shows me solely all the Inna's monks or solely all the Zuni witch doctors, or I want lawn to matter, so I want to be able to compare myself to lawn only players. If you get rid of everything else, then that is all you would see on the leaderboard. So it is in a way, without creating more leaderboards, which they don't seem to want to do, to have a season where that is now a potential poss possibility. You're getting rid of what is known to be a discovered best in terms of, yeah, Condemned Crusader, yeah, Wave of Light Monk, Sun Ruko, etc. And now what can you do with Lawn again? Like, is Lawn LTK going to come back? Is Lawn Wave of Light going to be a thing? Like, it, it would ask some interesting questions of players, so. Mm -hmm. And I, as I, and like I said before, the way we should approach themes is simple mechanical changes that aren't just you get X amount more of this, or if you do this, you get just more. Because it's not... It's not, it, it doesn't incentivize, it doesn't add anything new, it's just more of what we've got, which essentially this theme is. Um, again, happy to have it. It's a great, it's a first step. We all have, we all have to start somewhere. <laughs> um, but to, as I see, there's some chatter in chat, if I'm understanding what people are saying, is we, you can't, for something that's supposed to be different, and if they're not gonna put heavy amounts of development into these things, you, you can't, it's almost like you can't balance them in a way. You have to come up with something that's as neutral as possible, but there will be some shifting. But then again, in that shifting, whether it be, you know, oh, Crusader has a shit set, I can't play it because of X theme. I'll, I'll just go play Wizard. That's fine. Because yeah. if you're willing to play the wizard, that means the theme has already worked. Yes. It has shifted you away from what you would normally have done. Exactly. And you're already doing you're you're already doing the thing. So that's that's the point. It's not it's the point of the thing is not the thing itself. It's how you react to the to the thing in the first place. Exactly. How do you make it so that even though you're not creating new content, it could be the same patch for the next five years. Can you make player X who's playing for those five years do something different throughout the year or five years? And mm -hmm. like you said, like there might be a season where whatever theme that pops up is very beneficial for one class, not beneficial for another. 
And there's two ways that a player looks at that. They either take on the challenge and say, this isn't beneficial for the class I love to play, but I'm going to try it. Or they say, wow, I don't play Wizard, like you said, but Wizard is looking really good here, so let's go for it. Totally with you on that. So yeah, I think that's I think that should be what drives themes forward, is that they actively ask of a player, what are you going to do? I just put this problem in front of you. How do you solve it? And that's where I feel like this buff, and not to you know go too long on this or too down on it, but I just feel like that's where this one kind of falls down or gets that meh rating is that it doesn't uh, really ask you to change what you do. You just, if you come across a goblin, eh, there's another one. Solid. Passive. But it's not actively making you do something different. Yeah, so I guess to sum it up is like, we're happy for it. It's great that they're experimenting. It's a first step. We're looking forward to plastering the forums and any other way we can contact them with other ideas and hopefully the next one again september 16th tentative soon tm copyright whatever uh we'll have a more impactful which is the key where they're impactful um theme to look forward to so i think uh we've said enough on that sounds good and we still have other things to preview too. That was definitely the lead story from the blog post and something that people were mentioning in chat. So I do want to call attention to it. One of the things when they were talking about the introduction of theme seasons and the fact that we're getting the double goblin buff for this one, Season of Greed, which is where the show title comes from. Now you know. Uh, there was another paragraph that kind of got lost in the shuffle, but it says, In addition to doubling up on everyone's favorite treasure-thieving troublemakers, other celebrations may spring up across the globe as we kick off this exciting new seasonal concept. Be sure to keep a close eye on Twitter and Facebook for more information as we move into Season 14. And so this one's been kind of getting people who are paying attention riled up because they're like, What is it? Is this a maybe an opening weekend buff that we're going to get? Is there some other thing that they're gonna lop on to this theme that we don't yet know about and so we haven't seen anything as of showtime right now we haven't seen anything uh but i guess within the next couple oh. days maybe we will opening weekend buff double xp ah, <laughs> someone was someone was saying that and that would be hilarious because you know how so many people are like this is my plan for one through 70 and this is you know all these leveling things and use the challenge rift cash but then all that like either gets super accelerated or goes out the window because now it's just double EXP, just a race to get as much as you can. Oh my uh, god. Would... Uh, again, not to, harp <laughs> on it, not to harp on it too long. This is like pure like retrospective look. Could you imagine that happening with the old Conquest, like uh, first to level seven? Oh boy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> see, see how quickly people just, see how, like you just look at the, the rankings and just refresh it and like another like 50 people get on, you refresh again and another 100 people got refresh again, there's like another 100 people get on <laughs> and then it's done yeah that'd be pretty wild it would definitely be pretty crazy uh so yeah so that's something to look out for obviously by the time we have our next episode we'll know perhaps what that was alluding to and we'll also be able to talk about how the theme and such has been going so far but for those who don't yet know or are still looking to plan out their season a couple of things to let you know about hadrick's gifts options we have all those as previously mentioned they are on a specific rotation so if you're ever looking to know, there are resources out there that can kind of discern it for you because it's always the same. We've been getting uh, now that seasonal journeys have existed for over two sets of four in a row. We've seen that it goes like this, then that, then that, then that. And so this season coming up, it's the Barbarian with Legacy of Rakor, Crusader with Armor of Akan, Demon Hunter Embodiment of the Marauder, Monk in His Reach, Necromancer, Pestilence Master Shroud, Witch Doctor, Zuni Moss's Haunt, and Wizard Delsir's Magnum Opus. And so kind of going back to when you were talking about what your groups, your group composition and all that stuff, do you guys know what class each of you is going to be playing? And is any of that affected by Hadri's Gift? Do you think any of these are particularly interesting or pushing you in a certain direction? Um, I think for some people in the group, yes, for some others is... Like, it's my natural flip-flop between Wizard and DH, pretty much. Um, and how I just said, I'm going to be going Wizard. So, yep. uh, DMO, uh, Bloodshed actually did uh, an encouraging starter build uh, that can that seems to do GR20 seemingly fine. So, I'm encouraged by that. Um, 
I think uh, Knight will be doing a Witch Doctor, so that'll be cool to see him play Witch Doctor, because I don't think I've ever seen him play a Witch Doctor before. Yeah, confirmed in the uh, chat. Shepard? I don't know. Okay, the only thing I can guarantee with Shepard is that at some point, some way, somehow, he will make a barb. <laughs> and we love him for it. <laughs> we honestly do. Um, and then there's uh, Lion Sword. I think he's going to jump in on the opening weekend. I forgot what he's going to do. If I had to take a guess, it would be either... It would probably be Monk? Well, who knows? I could be wrong. That's what I he usually been reading, goes with. I haven't been reading the Twitters as quickly as I probably should have been over the last week or so. <laughs> You've been a little busy. But that would be a pretty good start because the Wish Doctor and... Uh, Wish Doctor and the monk, the monk would be good for, you know, just passive healing. Wish Doctor would be good for a little crowd control. Uh, myself and the Wish would be crowd control, some point damage. And then uh, Shepard, depending on what he rolls, could be another source of damage. So it, it would actually be a well-composed uh, group. Nice. Sounds good. Uh, on my side of things, I'm going to be doing hardcore this season. I'll actually be doing grouping this season, even though we will be running... Good luck, soldier. <laughs> oh, thank you. Even though we will be running SSF for season 14, I'm not going to be participating in it this coming season. I'm doing basically an on and off system. So season 13, I did SSF. Season 14, I'm going to do normally. Season 15, SSF, so on and so forth, just to keep it fresh for myself. And I've been hinting and trying to figure out what I want to do. Uh, the Barb's up there, the Demon Hunter's up there. Been trying out a decent amount of both of them. Did GR20 tests for Marauders and Raycor. Both destroy their GR20, so that's no problem. Um, I guess I'll see. We actually have a meeting right after the podcast is done with our group to discuss some stuff. So I guess we'll probably have it nailed down by then or in a couple hours. Um, but as far as looking at the... Hadrick's Gifts. I've been hearing actually some good things about Pestilence because people have been saying that you can speed farm with that setup. Of course, it is the solo set for Necromancers. Uh, and then in the four-player meta, it's the boss killer setup for them as well. So that's kind of an interesting one. Um, I've been hearing Inna's is good for the monk as far as like moving into support, even though usually you're going to kind of want to have that uh, Barbarian since like you mentioned when we were doing the season 13 review, barbs just always have a spot, whether it's the four player meta or the speed meta with the rat runs and the necros. So actually I heard Raycor is good for that too. So in a way this feels like the season of supports. It's kind of a very supportive start. And then some classes get a good start uh, DPS wise. I think uh, Marauders, like you were talking about too, is okay, not the speediest, but it should suffice enough to get you into your speed setups. And I think a cons is really the trap. I'm looking forward to how many people start Crusader. Because oh. <laughs> they think, oh, cons, everyone's doing con a con condemn. Look, it's free. Oh, let's go. And they're going to realize, just like you said, any... This disillusionment of, of dreams of glory will come crashing and burning down furious to the, to the freaking hells. Some people are going to get lucky. Some people will get the CDR necessary. They'll pick up their Friders Wraths and Blades of Prophecies right away and stuff. Or even try to run like something else maybe along the way, like a Blessed Shield or a Holy Shotgun before. But yeah, if you can't lock down the 56% CDR to have 100% uptime on Akrat's Champion, you're in for a bad time. You're going to have a bad time, whatever that quote is. It's just it doesn't function as well as it really can if you don't meet that threshold. So I'm... I'm looking, f not looking forward to, but I'm just waiting for the complaints when that happens. Um, but I imagine there will be a lot of people that start Crusader because they just see the hype and they love to ride the hype train. Um, any other closing thoughts on Hadrig's gifts? Nah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's standard rotation. I'll, de I'll deal with DMO. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, none of these really excite me. But yeah, like you said, you deal and then you move into whatever you really want to do. Uh, next up, we do have the Conquests for the season, so we know what those are. Uh, we have Avarice Avaricia, the 50 million gold streak. The Speed Demon and Need for Speed, which is a T10 rift, regular rift, in under 2 minutes. You've got On a Good Day and I Can't Stop, which is leveling gems to rank 65. You've got... Sorry, I actually just opened this image so I can read it better. You've got Divinity and Lionhearted, which is reaching a Greater Rift 75 solo. And not too far from doing that Greater Rift 70 for the Primals. So 
that one is really nice feeding into what you normally should do. And then as you mentioned, Dread, the Years of War and Dynasty, which is probably the grindiest one of them all in here, but still not that difficult, which is doing Greater If 55 solo with six different class sets. So at least for that one, you're going to have to have multiple characters, at least two. And then, you know, maybe do four sets in two, three and three, whatever works for you. But GR50, all these, the thing with this is that we have so much power that's crept up and the conquests themselves haven't changed to update their numbers really. So like doing a 75 back in the day kind of used to be asking a lot of characters, especially for hardcore. Like it was kind of risky to go for the 75 quickly. Um, but now it's like, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I do my GR70, no augments, no nothing. Let me uh, unlock my primals. And oh, while I'm at it, let me just get Lionhearted or Divinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, the only real things to note uh, that I can make about the Conquest is, first off, there's no set dungeon Conquest. <laughs> or like, the first time in a while. In a while, so yeah. <laughs> everyone rejoice. There's no set dungeon Conquest. Mm -hmm. we, like, is this where we did? Is this where we go? We did it, Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the, the second note is, and this is actually tied back to the theme. Even though they've nerfed uh, Giblin uh, Barons, there's going to be two of them now. Oh yeah. So if you get the T13 pretty quickly, and Maybe you get a gold, uh, what, uh, the chest piece. Gold skin? Yes. I, was, I, I wanted to say gold wrap, and then that just overruled whatever I was going to say for the chest piece. If you get that as, like, one of your first uh, legendaries, and you, you, you just happen to stroll across to uh, Giblin uh, Goblins, you're going to be already around... Probably halfway. Yeah, I would say anywhere between 18 to 20 million. Mm -hmm. So if you just keep the streak alive, especially if in a four-player group, you can have that one nailed down pretty damn early. Definitely. Yeah, I still feel for doing it, you're going to need a Boon of the Hoarder, which is usually going to be... So the way I'm approaching these conquests is a little anti-synergistic because if you want to go for Avaricia first, then likely you're leveling your Boon of the Hoarder decently. But it's one of the gems that has a cap at 50 so you can't take it to 65 to have it be one of the ones you get for your on a good day so you're kind of deciding which direction you go you might not need a fully leveled boon of the hoarder though so maybe you give it a few levels because i think it already starts off like 75 percent or 50 percent chance to drop gold on a kill and then as you level it to 50 it goes to 100 percent chance so maybe you only need a few like you said if you have that gilded baron double to boost you along as well or you just get one of those really open greater or open rifts um with like you know the mobs from i can't think of that really bad map that no one likes uh shrouded moors because they're usually pretty mm -hmm. dense and you get a lot of those guys like you'll get it super instantly so i don't know it's uh, these well, like you said though these are super easy yeah and, and i i'll say counterpoint but in a positive way is if you think about it this way, if you level Boon Hoarder pretty much close to, if not maxed, if you get lucky with a gold wrap, depending on what class you go, you'll have that style of speed uh, build uh, early on. You'll be getting a lot of gold early on, so your rerolls to your uh, crafting, and I guess more importantly is, even though you sunk the early levels into it, the gold allows you to burn extra rolls on the next set of gems. So it may <laughs> be a a uh, net zero loss in the end. <laughs> yes, you and Tuba came to the exact same clue. I don't even know if you read what he had said yet, but nope. that's exactly no. <laughs> it. I didn't think about that, but yeah, that's actually a great point, is if you get the Boon of the Hoarder early, level that up, get the gold, then that does indeed feed your empowering your greater rifts. So yeah, you're, you guys are smart, smart cookies. Makes perfect sense. I'm smart. I play this game. <laughs> you did it. You did it, Reddit. So yeah, definitely uh, for those who who maybe complained about seasonal journey. Although I feel like we see it less these days. But some day, some people back in the days were like, oh gosh, I have to do conquests again. Which conquests are the easiest? But you got a nice set of them this time around. So should be no complaints to Guardian, except for of course, as always, the one mastering a set dungeon people always get hung up on. 
And then uh, another thing that was revealed with this uh, Season 14 preview is the cosmetics. I have those on screen at the moment. It's the standard uh, transmog pieces of the Conqueror set. Nothing new there. But then the portrait frame this time around is styled around Tal Rasha. Which I haven't seen anyone come up with any, you know, <laughs> theories or like, why is it Tal Rasha? It's just, it is, I guess. And then the pennant is the other Sorcerer's cosmetic. coming back. <laughs> They're going to announce it at BlizzCon. The, uh, the other cosmetic this time around is a pennant. And it's styled around Tyrael, Justice. It's got an angelic look to it, so that's what you got to look forward to when you get your full four chapters of the seasonal journey done. Yeah, if I didn't know better, the the pennant it looks like they built a part of the uh, crystal arch as like the main focal point of it. I could see that, yeah, because we're getting like a side view or like a three quarter view of it, so we don't quite see it head on. But yeah, that that seems viable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so yeah that's dope and that's pretty much it for the season 14 preview we have other community things going on we've already yes we did. we've already given you the ssf reminder but there's another thing that's coming back this time and dread you just put something out for this so can you tell us what awesome things can people do to help others in the diablo 3 community and beyond oh man put me on the spot <laughs> all right so um a fellow uh, D3 streamer, uh, Wolfcrier, uh, I think for not including season 14, uh, the prior three seasons, uh, for the opening weekend of each season has rallied uh, D3 community streamers uh, or even anyone who's willing to just boot up a stream and get a few people to watch that, that if they're willing to donate uh, to have a three-day event. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to raise funds for a charity that he chooses. And for the fourth charity, uh, the fourth charity weekend, uh, and as we should say, the, the what he does is he calls it LWAC or Level with a Cause. Mm -hmm. And that's how it ties into the opening weekend, because that's when everyone's in it. We're all excited again. We're leveling our characters. So that's how we did it. And it's an awesome deal. So for this opening weekend, uh, I don't know how many people. I think it's over two dozen uh, already. Uh, streamers of varying personalities. I know yourself is included. A lot of the uh, standard I don't know, standard. Uh, uh, I don't know how else to say it. Uh, standard, you know, streamers you come to expect and watch, like I think uh, Blood SVR, uh, Adam. Oh God, if you can get his uh, internet fixed, I don't like all the streamers that are around are going to participate, and they're gonna, they set goals. They and they just have their audience donate to the charity, which for this uh, particular season is the St. Jude's Research Hospital. Which, if you didn't know uh, what it is, is it's basically a hospital that deals with children that have uh, cancer. So children that could be as, you know, they're they're less than one years old to however old they are, and more importantly than that, not only do they help uh, by paying uh, by the parents don't pay for the medical costs, but the parents can actually stay, if I remember correctly, stay at the hospital uh, cost free that so they don't have to worry about, you know, food bills is that wow. essentially, essentially it, it, I think it, if you had to boil it down is so the parents don't have to choose between having a house for their child or having a child to begin with. Uh, I know it's kind of stark <laughs> uh, realization there, but unfortunately this is what it is. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a great cause. I know last year they smashed, uh, not last year, last season they smashed uh, what the uh, goal was by a few thousand. Uh, and hopefully they'll do it again uh, this season and the season after that. Cause this is, because it's always great when we're excited for the new season, we're excited to level up, we get, to be, we get back together with our crews, you know, being back with Shep and night for myself but it's even great when you're watching your streamers and you know that they're going for a cause it actually gets you a little bit more motivated and this charity event thrives off of that it's like you know what we're here we're fighting 
they're doing this, you know what? Let me throw down like a five bucks, ten bucks to help to help the streamer out reach their goal, and by them reaching their goal, the master charity goal uh, yeah. gets met, if not gets higher. So it, it's a great cause. Wolf Choir is a fucking saint for doing this kind of stuff because this I can only imagine how much effort and work this is because. There's also legal ease involved in this kind of nonsense that you, w you probably wouldn't think of as long as coordinating people and make sure all the widgets for Twitch are set correctly oh, yeah. and people aren't screwing that up left and right and everything's going. So I could only imagine this is a Herculean effort for him and he's this will be the fourth season. I hope he hope this fuels him to keep on doing it season after season because this is uh, some of the few bright spots still. Uh, from season to season to uh, do for it. Absolutely well said, man. Yeah, I want to also take some time to give a shout out to Wolf Cryer too, because yeah, he's organizing it. He's the one who, it's like herding cats, you know, he's trying to answer all the questions to the streamers, help them get everything set up, sending reminder after reminder after reminder to remind us to set all our stuff up and making it as painful, painlessly easy I don't even know what I'm saying that right. He makes it very easy for you to not screw it up and get everything set up properly. So kudos to him again. Um, and you definitely are right. The legalese side of things, he you know has to concert efforts with all the different Diablo websites out there, the fan sites, Blizzard itself. He usually gets support from, and I can imagine that's a hurdle to jump over to with all the red tape and stuff. So yeah, definitely great, great, great thing that happens each season. Uh, again, it's extended to anybody that wants to stream because it's a stream driven effort for bringing in the donations. The donations go directly to the cause via Tiltify. Um, everyone sets their own individual goals. Like Dread mentioned, there's the overall campaign goal. Hopefully we smash it this time around like we did last season and seasons in prior. And yeah, just really great. Again, like you said, Dread, keeping our community strong together. It's one of the really awesome things that you can kind of hang your hat on you know say i i know no matter how crazy the competition gets no matter how riled up we get about bots or whatever we start out on a positive note right we start out on a good foot and i think it's it's a good way to ground ourselves before things get nuts yeah yeah it definitely is and it, it for me personally even though it's it, it's funny when we're when the season ends and we're not playing the game, that's like my busy time with all the articles. But this is always the one, really one bright spot article that I always look forward to doing. Because I know that I'm, me doing this article is helping Wolf Cryer. That means Wolf Cryer, he's doing the charity, rallying the community, and we're, we're, we're still, we, there's still that connective tissue that holds us together, which even though we're all waiting for Diablo next and we all understand this probably further off than it is uh, than we like it to be uh, this is one of those small little things that keeps us together as a community and that by itself is a worthy cause let alone what it actually does so it's something I look forward to even though I personally don't participate in it it's something I le always look forward to to help him and everyone else with it absolutely and just to make sure that it's super clear, this starts with the beginning of season 15. Wow, I jumped to season, guys. <laughs> season 14 is over. Uh, I've been doing this in my head all the time because it's season 14 starting on June 15th. I'm gonna try not to transpose those. But yes, yeah, so this Friday, by the time you're listening to this, maybe the campaigns are already kicking off. But again, this Friday, June 15th, season 14 start, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Or five, oh, no, don't do this. 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Numbers are hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> that should all be correct. Uh, and then it's going to be different for the other regions. I think it's 5 p.m. Central European summertime or something. Don't quote me on it. It's all part of the blog post. All that stuff's on Diablo.BlizzPro.com. So do check out the website. Plug, plug, plug. And yeah, it's going to be all weekend long. So the 15th, the 16th, the 17th. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And like Dread has been talking about too, I don't even think we hit this in the actual Season 14 preview, but one of the cool things that they added into the preview was they gave us a glimpse at what the end date might be of the season. So in past times, we always got that two-week warning blog post. This is when your current season is going to end two weeks from now, and here's when your next season starts. One of the things they want to do for more transparency is also let us know potentially 
with an, a caveat that it could change, you know, subject, subject to change, like they often say, the season will end at this certain time. So in the season 14 preview, they gave us a date of September 16th, I believe it was, which is a Sunday. So, you know, standard three months, it's about what we often guess it should be or will be. Um, and then they could shift based on whatever they need to do to end the season or align it with other timings and such. So just something to look out for, basically. But yeah, love with the cause. Season 14. Everything's coming together. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Well, somehow, some way, every season opener get, gets me excited again. <laughs> and this is coming from somebody who absolutely despised the thought of seasons way so all right blizzard one for you they win. <laughs> and yeah uh you did put it in the chat and i actually think it's worth saying out loud too for anyone that is listening and wants to participate in level with the cause there is a website uh www.levelwiththecause.com and of course like i mentioned dread put out an article uh to support this on diablo.blizzpro.com so you can get more detailed info over there as well so if you want to also stream or just help out then check all those points of information out we pretty much went through all of our news. The only other thing that's always on here is BlizzCon. It's coming still. <laughs> they didn't cancel it yet. Uh, November 2nd and 3rd, Friday and Saturday. No new news. Uh, no announcements from Blizzard at E3 too, which, you know, again, we didn't really think was going to happen. So people are like, well, maybe at BlizzCon now. Now all the in now all the eyes are turning to BlizzCon's the last big conference left for blizzard fans but again i i don't know man i just don't think it's gonna be unless we see diablo 3 on switch i just don't think we're getting anything okay first i have to scare you a little bit because i because every time i do this i scare myself because it, okay as you get older your perception of time gets wonkier and it seems time just goes faster because you just use so much over the course of the day you kind of forget about the day until you realize it's the end of the week and then at the end of the week you realize oh crap it's the end of the month and etc etc mm -hmm. um we're about four and a half months away from blizzcon yep it's like oh we're in summer here like no it's like it's, four it's, and a half months yeah it's gonna come up way it, fast it's like it's like it's gonna be like july 4th like oh july 4th and then it's gonna be like the end of july and it's like oh crap like like three months and it's like labor day weekend it's like oh like wow and then it's gonna be halloween <laughs> and then we're there and then we're there so uh that's crazy um i mean this blizz kind of looking forward to it um and plans yes plans <laughs> so many plans all the plans Why, i always do this to myself i always make plans except i'm gonna, I'm gonna hold myself to them uh, svr on that damn dr dice drinking game I came up with. <laughs> like literally I, I came up with the concept within like 10 seconds and then again like word vomit with that quote that I read at the third grade level I'll, I'll agree to that one um, I literally went into uh, in Autodesk Inventor and I drew the 3D model of the dice exactly how I wanted it to be I'm like, like fuck I drew it now, and it, it actually passed I guess I can segue here because um, it actually works with this and BlizzCon. The dice, when I loaded it into uh, the website that I got the you know, coins from, it passed more material checks than the coin did. So I'm like, oh, so this could be printed. All right, I guess I have to come up with rules for the game and come <laughs> up with creative graphics. I'm like, yeah, this will be a thing. Um, but on that note, before we go back to you and BlizzCon and everything else, uh, if you've been following the thread, I've been trying to keep the thread on Twitter go, uh, last year there was a competition for a Diablo coin that uh, Nine and uh, Levi ran. And it was because I wanted to try to come up with a coin idea. Unfortunately, last year was just swamped with real life. You know, buying a house, moving, mm -hmm. a state over negotiating like driver's licenses social security numbers well not social security numbers but you know just moving everything it's a little bit more than i thought it was going to be so i didn't get a chance to actually do a coin however this year i am pulling through with amazing results and 
on the Twitter post, Twitter kind of compacts the images so you weren't able to get that good of a result. I think when you see the coins can be inverted just because how webcams work, but you'll be able to see what you're looking at. So the coin that should be available through one way or another this year for the guys, so this will be a way for them to make a little bit of money, you know, like Patreon-esque kind of money mm. off, off this kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm going to give you kind of like a quick shot of the head side, which is the West March work workshop symbol I came up with for the logo, just for the coin. And then the tail side uh, is basically my version of a scythe with the Double 3 logo and it says BlizzCon 2018 on it. So I'll try to carefully maneuver the coin in front of the camera so we can zoom in on it. And unfortunately, I have to wait for the delay on the stream. Kind of Other way. It. It's gonna be mirrored because of the webcam. If that's what you're looking at, unfortunately. <laughs> no, I mean like move it more in frame. There you go. There you go. So Higher. There. Yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> gotta get, gotta get the song, the stripper, the song, the stripper to play. So. Looks good. Other side. So, and then the tail side, and this is this is the version two of the coin because I had to make this side a lot more in depth. So now the D for Diablo is all the way raised. The claw marks pull it back some mi middle. There we go. Yeah, there's the, that focus. Uh, basically, the, the the bezels, like you know, when you get an ancient or a primal that go around the claw marks, uh, help emphasize a lot more. And then there's the BlizzCon 2018 text on it. Nice. Which again may be correct, may be off. I don't know. So, this was done in a uh, premium plastic, but even so, this it didn't really cost all that much. They, when you feel them, they kind of have the weight of like a checker piece. They're about they're two inches in diameter, and they're about a quarter inch thick. They're not heavy. They're sturdy. They shouldn't break unless you like really try to break them. And what I'm thinking about doing is this is this is the premium plastic. This is about twice as expensive as the regular plastic, but I'm unsure of the print quality from the website. So I'm thinking about doing uh, ordering maybe one or two more of the colored plastics uh, of the regular and see how the print quality comes out on that. Because if they come out good, then there's two different uh, materials. And then I think this is the first time I'm actually bringing this up to either you or nine. We could set up a West March workshop store with the website to the point where we select, we put in the uh, model, we put in the materials that we want to sell and you guys can put your markup on it. So, and then Shapeways handles the rest. I think they do a small percentage on the markup they get a cut of and then everything else goes to you so you guys wouldn't even have to order the coins and ship them manually like shapeways handles everything you nice. just set up a store and this would be a way of you guys generating income that's not a patreon that you have to come up with shit from your ass <laughs> like what you can do no that's really cool plus it gives people something physical to hold on to and it could actually take on the form of like the challenge coin idea or if you go to BlizzCons and get to hang out and meet up with all of us and stuff. Like, hey, show your coin, you know? Yeah, so. and, and I that's what I was thinking of when I did the BlizzCon 2018 because every year I can just edit one side, upload that model, and as long it, as it passes all the checks through through the materials on the website, should just be good to go. Awesome. I dig it, man. Looking really cool. Awesome project came out of nowhere i like it and i did want to correct myself i didn't want to forget this because people are gonna you know they pick on everything but there is another conference i totally forgot it's called gamescom <laughs> it's kind of a big one that is in august so you know if you were trying to say like oh blizzard could have another opportunity to announce something then yeah maybe gamescom could be a thing too so i do want to throw that out that that is usually in august uh that is a thing before blizzcon so and if I could, look, briefly, let me jump on that hype train, because the interesting thing about Gamescom this year is it's a week or so after 
the release of Battle for Azeroth. Oh. So that basically pulls any big announcements for Battle for Azeroth away. Overwatch and Heroes, they could have their standard stuff, more or less. They do tend to do bigger reveals than you would think at Gamescom, you know, with Blizz- BlizzCon being like two and a half months away. Right. It's like, it seems kind of counterproductive, but they do do it. Um, but it does leave, you could say, the spotlight open for something. Mm. The only reason why I would say no is because if you're doing a new game with like new everything and you haven't released it yet, if you go the two and a half months or so from Gamescom to BlizzCon, you're giving yourself two and a half more months of production time. It's true. Which could be so, a lot of time in Dev World. Yeah, like that's almost the entirety of the Reaper of Souls uh, beta. Like the Reaper of oh. Souls beta was from like what mid November to, to the end of February. Yeah, <laughs> yep. it, it, it was surprisingly short, but they were able to do a crap ton in that time. So when you, when you think about that, when you think about the Reaper of Souls beta, I put a context to it once. Yeah, you can do quite a lot in there. So. I wouldn't hold uh, how we're all viewing BlizzCon this year. Where I'm viewing the same at Gamescom. If something happens, it happens. If nothing happens, I didn't get myself hyped up for it to be disappointed. Yep, ditto. Keeping the expectations low. Let's be pleasantly surprised. And I think that's it, man. That's a good spot for us to leave everybody off on. We don't have any emails, unfortunately. And there's no uh, Twitter stuff for me to pull in here for the show. So, this is my part where I tell you guys, send us things. We love to hear from you guys out there. We want to know that you're still engaged with us. If there are things that you want to see the show do, some feedback, suggestions, feel free to send some missives over westmarshworkshop at blizzpro.com. We do also have the earlier call to action, which is to let us know what some of your theme ideas are for themed seasons. Send those over in emails, and we'd be happy to read them and pick them apart and tinker with them on the show. And hopefully we can get some more things going on. And of course, your items as you discover all sorts of goodies in Season 14. We want to see those. So get them all coming into us, because we'd love and be excited for them. Dread, any last words before I hit this outro? Kill them goblins. Make them your bitch. <laughs> Well said. Well said. So, all right, guys, we're heading out. I did give you the email, but I'll say it one more time. Westmarchworkshop at blizzpro.com. That's where you can find us to send your long-form messages. We're also on Twitter at the WM Workshop. If you got some shorter things you want to send, some pictures of dogs or cats or coins or whatever you got, like this guy sends us, get those going. <laughs> we love to see it all. Uh, the live stream that you're watching right now if you're here or that you've missed, but you should come and check out every other Wednesday. It's twitch.tv slash blizzpro. Usually starting promptly at 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific. Sometimes we're a little late, you know, it's all good. Uh, and you can come and check it out. It's a great time. Usually the pre-show we banter. Usually during the show we banter. Usually after the show we banter. It's a great time. And of course, here there are other shows housed by the blizzpro Syndicate Umbrella Corporation. <laughs> we have Well Met, which is the Hearthstone show. Unfortunately, some of our other shows have gone by the wayside, but maybe they will resurface as new things in the future. But there also is the Blizz Pro Adventure Club, and they are sim- simply a group of dudes that get together and play some games. So check that out. Usually they're playing Blizzard games, but sometimes they delve into other things to get some excitement and fun going within the community. The website, as we've been mentioning all episode long, is diablo.blizzpro.com. Tons of resources there for you right now. The mega post is the spot to be. Bookmark that sucker. It's got everything you could need to start off your season 14 right. Uh, in game, we've got things for you too. The Blizzpro clan, lots of spots right now. We've had a bunch of people inquiring, looking for a new home. So if you feel like your clan's dead or you don't have one, Go ahead and get those submissions in right now. You just have to find it in-game and request to join. Uh, usually before the season starts, it kind of starts to fill up a little bit. But because maybe now things are a little quieter on the Western Front, you can get in. And if you don't want to leave the community, or sorry, if you don't want to leave your clan, 
then feel free to join the community. We have an in-game community, West March Workshop, and you can find that easily using the in-game interface. That has unlimited spots, and usually at the beginning of season, people are in there showing off great items, looking for groups to put together. So definitely use that as a resource and keep everyone together. And you can also utilize the Discord, which is discord.gg slash blizzpro. And on there, you can get voice channels to hang out and coordinate groups with each other, especially for opening night. There's channels in there to talk to each other with text and arrange for groups and chat about the future of the game and all that stuff. So check that out. As far as individuals, you can find Nineball, who is out there floating in the world, hopefully working hard and doing good things. His Twitter is at NineballGamer. His Twitch, which he laments that he never gets to do anymore because internet, uh, is twitch.tv slash Nineball. Hopefully we'll see him on there soon. For Dread, he's got Twitter, which is just his one-stop shop, right? At DreadScythe, D-R-E-D-S-C-Y-T-H-E. You can find him there, send him pictures of penguins or something. I think he likes those. And then for myself... I'm it, not Archon. <laughs> all right. And for myself, I'm Leviathan. My Twitter is at LeviathanD3. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash Leviathan111. I'm going to be doing a 24-hour stream to kick off Season 14, so I would love it if you come by. I'll also be participating in Level with the Cause, so come and support the charity there. And until a next episode, man, I'm out of words. I got nothing left. What you got? Did you say Jar Jar? What a dick. You think you can get away with that because Nine's not here? <laughs>